one of the things you can do with the secret solution that you won't see people doing with normal solutions is you can back up their servers without loading agents on them, but you can also back up desks on PCs um, and for people's personal workstations, and there's no need to load an agent. You just can go to the DS client, find that workstation on the network, say back up the C drive, the D drive, the system state, the services database, and it doesn't cost you very much in your vault because most desk side PCs contain a lot of duplicate data. And it's, uh, they've got the same OSs, the same application, they downloaded the same PowerPoint presentations and memos from that came out, and a lot of it is duplicate, so it doesn't take up a lot of space in the vault, but it allows you to restore those workstations should they ever fail. Or even migrate somebody's workstation from one piece of hardware to another if you're upgrading. You just do a full backup of the workstation, you bring in new hardware, Okay, and it could have been backing up a Dell. You bring in a compact, whatever it is. You load the operating system on it, and you have to do that because, remember, the DS client is receiving the data. It's either coming from the WAN or removal media, and then it's restoring it over the network to a source, and it must see that system on the network in order to restore it. So you load the base OS, and then we will apply all the applications, all the executables, restore the data, and you can have that end customer back up and running you know, in a matter of hours. And the thing is, you can go right back to work. People don't realize this, but if you ever lost your C drive and somebody got you a new computer, loaded the operating system, loaded the applications, and hopefully you backed up your data someplace. You had a U drive on a network drive that was backed up, or you drag and drop your My Documents folder onto a file server. But even if you get your data back, you can't go back to work. You go to send an email, you don't have your contact list. You've got to sit around and wait for people to send you emails and rebuild all your contacts. You go to the internet and try to browse for something. You don't have your favorite. So when somebody gets a new PC, even if they have the data back, they're very unproductive for several days while they try to do all the configuration. You can solve that with the Segra very efficiently, very effectively, without loading any agents. And it's something that uh, you can do with this solution that's really not practical to do um, with agent-based architectures. Because the DS client is free, you can actually load the DS client on laptops. At that point, it's just backing up itself, but you set it to back up itself at, say, 11 o'clock at night or whatever you want. If it's connected to the network, it does a backup. If it's not connected to the network, it just pauses. The next time that that laptop does connect to any Internet, you know, just a, a wireless connection in a copy shop, the software is smart enough to recognize that it's got an IP connection. It says what blocks have changed since the last time I had an IP connection. So let's go ahead and dedupe, compress, and encrypt them and send them over the WAN into the vault. If you don't finish, you don't catch up, doesn't matter. The backup just pauses. The next time there's a network connection, it picks up where it left off. So it's a very reliable way of actually backing up laptops. And there's a lot of information that are floating around on laptops today that people think might be elsewhere, but it really isn't. Uh, there's both CPU and bandwidth throttling, so when Bob goes into the coffee shop to check his email, he can still check his email. He can throttle it down where he won't even know that it's a background process. You're catching up on his backup. So, And the clients are free. They don't cost anything. But now you've got your different sites being backed up. There are some additional things that a Seagra offers that, that other solutions really don't. One of them is a local storage option. Remember I said it might take 10 days to back up uh, uh, you know, a 100 gig exchange server over a T1 connection. If you'd like to, if you have local storage available, or you'd like to just go out and buy some cheap storage, go buy yourself a SATA drive, plug it into the DS client, you can keep copies of the backups locally at that local site as well, so that when it comes time to restore, you can restore from that local copy without having to drag it all over the network or without having to send removable media they can just do a quick restore right from that local storage. It can be very cheap storage. If it fails, okay, because, you know, it was cheap, so what? Go buy another drive, stick it in there. The next night you repopulate the backups because you've got all the data stored in the centralized vault where hopefully you're running enterprise class 1500 RPM, fiber channel, SCSI, SAS type drives, and a hardware rate configuration. You want to protect that data, okay? But one of the other things that you can do, though, is put in multiple DS clients in a site and have them run in a grid configuration. The DS clients can go on virtual machines, but
But if you're going to load multiple ones, you wouldn't want to load them on virtual machines on the same ESX host, for example. You'd want to load them on physical different boxes. And this is something you would do, one, if you have a lot of data. A single DS client can only process so much data at a time. Or if you just want redundancy, because once you've got a grid configuration for the DS client, you can go ahead and have them share that workload. If one of the DS clients hangs or the system that's on goes down, the other DS clients know about that. They'll pick up the workload, and you'll still get all the sources backed up through the other DS clients. There is no other option out there, no other solution out there that's agent-based. If an agent hangs, backups don't occur. With an agent-based architecture and loading multiple clients in a grid configuration, you can ensure that your backups do complete, even if one of the systems that is loaded on dies. You can also put in a grid configuration at your centralized vault for your DS system. We refer to that as an N plus one. And what that is is multiple servers that are sharing the workload. If one of them goes down, the other servers just automatically pick up the workload. There's nothing that you have to do other than find out what went wrong and fix it. At this point, when you get to multiple servers, and typically that's someplace in the range, it could it depends on I.O., but between 6 to 8 terabytes of data in the vault, which by that time is probably representing 18 to, you know, 18 to 20, 25 terabytes of customer data. But at some point, a single system cannot handle it. There's so many threads in an operating system, so you have to put in an N plus 1. But at that point in time, you know, you're backing up a lot of data, and, uh, and we scale. The thing is, all those servers in that N plus 1 must have access to the same storage, which pretty much dictates using a NAS device once you get to that size. It's very difficult. SAN LUNs are assigned to individual servers. You'd have to go out and buy some third-party package to share out those LUNs, and we wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that. We would recommend that you buy NAS storage, and you have all those servers can then access the backup data. Another option that's available to you is to put in our Backup Lifecycle Manager. The Backup Lifecycle Manager is basically, you can think of it as an archive. You can set up automated policies to take older backup data and automatically move it to a secondary system. That system over there could be 7200 RPM, SATA drives, uh, slower, cheaper storage, because you're not writing to it 8, 10, 12 hours a night. That's where you're going to store the old backup data that people have to keep for compliance reasons or just policies. But for the most part, when people restore data, they restore from the latest and greatest copy or possibly from a copy that was taken a couple weeks ago before they got a virus, but they don't store, restore from six-month-old data. They may need to keep it. So when you do that, you can set up policies after 60 days, move it all out to a secondary disk system and save on your disk storage cost. But a secret also recognizes that data that has been archived probably is of lesser value. It won't be accessed as often. So a secret has a reduced license cost that's still capacity-based. But when you move it to BLM, not only do you save on hardware costs, you save on license.